these deaths. Okay, so I'm gonna be watching him. He seems to be quite a powerhouse here. Um, very good at surviving. Who? Who is that? Sorry, Shaft. my quick live will skip it. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, he had some great double frags there. Um, and you know, anytime you can do damage without taking damage, it's gonna be a big deal. Uh, this map especially, there's a lot of opportunities for that to happen. There's also a lot of opportunities to like, I, I see it happen a lot on this map. Just, you gotta have the right weapon out at any time. Mm -hmm. You know, you could come out, get ready to rail someone, and, and right outside the door, there's a guy with an LG, and he's exactly. just going to totally melt your face. And so you've <laughs> got to always be aware of what you've got. And uh, with that being said, it looks like we're going to get started. So, uh, Grease, why not take it away? Yeah. And so, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to see how this plays out. I mean, this particular map... It's designed very differently from DM6. Um, you only have a couple of places where you can get some nice long range work, and it's uh, we're seeing it happen right now. Shaft setting up with his entire team over in uh, sort of the, the cave side, and they are just spamming this one entrance. Demo is in charge. You can see him. He's uh, pointed the other way from where Shaft is is uh, facing. And oh, oh, we got a pause. Looks like we got Ooh, a 999 from Yuto, who uh, did go down. Uh, I'm not sure if that was a result of his uh, ping there, but uh, we did get a pause. We'll see what happens here. Is this, it looks uh, like we're, we're going to have a reboot, so we might be here for a minute. Okay. Jahar, were you able to get any uh, stats from that last game, maybe from Peel? Yes, I was. Let me bring them up here. On, on uh, oh geez, on the red team we had a 38% grenade launcher, a 34% LG <laughs> over the blues, 33%. But blue did take the rocket launcher with 38 over 26. So overall, you know, we didn't see as wide a margin as we saw in our last matchup. So anything could go here. But I totally agree with you guys. Definitely looks like GHS has a lot to do as far as communication goes. And on a map like this, with that central bridge area being so vital. Uh, that, that's definitely something that needs to be worked on because, as you said, you know, it's really, uh, I don't want to say easy, but it, it's pretty applicable to set up your team, get in position, and totally rape anybody who comes through the teleporter or other entrances. Now, do we have anyone standing out with uh, LG or Rail? Because I, I did see quite a bit of LG and... Um... On LG, actually, uh, Faklu, or Fakyu, uh, stood out Fakyu. with 42%. Nobody else even hit 40, so he was the outlier there pretty strongly. And on rail, it was actually Shaft, appropriately named, with 47% rail <laughs> over FACU's 40%. Okay. Wheat, what do you think that uh, GHS needs to pull together here in order to, to try um, and recover? Well, I mean, I think that uh, what was pretty apparent to me is that, you know, although the start might have been a little, uh, a little rough, um, when they had that teamwork working, it it, it, it it was working for them. But more importantly, where I saw them get those several rounds in a row is they were sort of playing the whole let's be snipers. Let's pretend like, you know, this is Counter-Strike and we're hiding behind boxes. Let's try to snipe these guys. Let's try to get their health down and then let the other guys that are running around with, uh, you know, with LGs, etc. to sort of sweep up. So, you know, the question is, is are they going to be able to do that better on this map? Well, um, you know, again, we saw this map in the first matchup. Uh, we talked a little bit about the entrances and that being sort of a, a, a major place to watch out for. People seem to like this uh, main uh, curved room here because if you do take the top, you, uh, you, you sort of have that aerial advantage and you can watch uh, from those doorways. But I, I feel like this map plays a lot like old school Quake 3 DM7, where uh, you would have the red armor in that main room. But the best attack you could make was a coordinated attack from those doorways. Uh, as soon as you like throw players off and they're focused on one side, but you throw players at another side, you could do a shitload of damage in a situation like this. And I feel like this plays exactly the same way. Are they going to be able to do that? Who knows? Because as you mentioned, it really comes down to their communication. Um, and also, you know, a little bit of luck with the spawn. How quickly you can get yeah. to that location, what you're going to do if, if you, the other team gets there first. Um, I think we'll know very quickly in the first couple of rounds how they're going to be able to handle themselves against P4F on this map. Because P4F definitely showed 
that they have the chops to, to sort of control a map like this. Um, uh, GHS after that last map, you know, even though I haven't seen some of their other matches in this tournament, I'd have to, you know, I'd have to see how they play to really determine what they're going to do in terms of damage on this map. Yeah, this is a good yeah, map, though, if, if you can be a sneaky bastard, and especially coming through on that main room there. If you get bounced off the bridge, your options are to stick around and LG it out, which I really hope GHS doesn't do because that's certainly a death trap. Getting out of there, going through the lower, uh, and not coming back in through the teleporter, it really gives you the time to double back around and set that up. But that is a setup that takes a little bit of time and therefore requires much more communication with the rest of your teammates. Well, I think that's worth talking about because we really have yet to see either team be very patient. And uh, this is a change up. Um, a long time ago, we covered um, Clan Arena. Um, that was a uh, tournament set up by Fnatic for the very first Fnatic Play Cup that we covered. And um, one of one of the uh, very first matches that we watched, um, one team, they literally held their ground and they never, ever pushed um, aggressive. Like, they would basically wait for the other team to finally, you know, sort of make the call and, uh, and attempt to press a very well-guarded position. And, uh, and the team trying to push those choke points was just destroyed. And uh, I think you definitely have the ability to set that up on this map. Um, I'm very curious to see you know, how it gets played out. I wonder if you know one of these teams is going to show that kind of patience. Well, if you do have a team against you that's turtling like that, and especially on a map like this, there are things you can do. But it still remains to be seen as, just like you said, they need to have that kind of patience in order to even counter somebody playing really defensive like that because you can coordinate some attacks, you can come in at the same time from multiple angles, you know, throw up some grenades from below, throw an LG from both sides, throw in the rails. But unlike DM6, I, I think uh, GHS's faults are going to be much more distinct if, if they continue along the same lines. If they really want to be snipers, it's not going to work out so well on this map because the, the points you can do that along that main room are really limited to the doorways, and you're just gonna get your ass handed to you right. if, if you know they happen to have the better aim on the rail and the grenades coming at you as well. And wait, what's your take? If you had to choose between, uh, if if you're gonna be the guy calling the shots, um, would you favor a little bit of patience and trying to hold a room? Because I I did see a lot of times, GHS they they don't have that uh, grouping mentality. They they don't have that uh, sort of you know, turtle when we're down to try to even up that match score and then go a little bit aggressive. And I, I don't know. Right. What are your thoughts? Um, uh, my, you know, it's always good to be patient um, because anytime you start to get overly aggressive, you're going to make mistakes. But more importantly, it's more important to be dynamic. You know, I don't think you can necessarily commit to any one strategy. Okay, if they do this, we're going to do this because you've got to know that if they attack, you know, with three guys from this side, maybe we just need to give up our position. Or, right. you know, th there's just so many different possibilities, uh, but that's also what can make a good leader. It's like being able to recognize all these different possibilities, all these different situations, and then ultimately making that call. Um, so, and a lot of times a player has to do it by themselves because as we all know, CA can happen so quickly. So, you know, before you know it, it could be over and done with. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's a lot of experience and just sort of knowing what to do in various situations. And yeah, I, especially on a map like this, you know, if you do have the proper movement skills and you can rocket jump around like a mad mofo, you can really speed around, come around from a different angle and set up all sorts of crazy ambushes. I've seen some great things. It still remains to see if we'll see them tonight. Another thing that I've, I've seen another critique, if I were to make it here, GHS has a tendency to walk into 2 on ones and even worse, 3 on ones uh, They're going to need to figure that out before they uh, can pull out the yes, win the Chuck here. Chuck Norris syndrome. I can, <laughs> yeah. I can do Not this. No, you can't. Not when they both got LG. All right, well, we do have Sinker in the QLT VIRC, so Prepare feel free to... to uh, there we go. Three, two, okay. Let's pause this so week. are we officially live or no? We're gonna repause or? I have no idea. Gonna play out this, I think we're playing out this round. I'm not sure. Yeah. Maybe he's. Is he here and then he's gonna join back up or? I don't know he's that he's here. 
I'm, I'm not seeing him though, and it's currently a three on four by my screen. Uh, so 